Very recently, I did a screen recording test where I pitched various applications up against Brawl Stars to see which came out on top. And one of those developers got back to me. They are cool pixel, they appreciated the test, but they want me to try their latest version. So this is a re-review of CoolPixel version 1.5.1. So let's get the administrative duties out of the way first to download CoolPixel. You will need to get it from outside of the official app store since no screen recorders are available there yet. You need to point your browser to m.coolpixel.tv. You should see this web page. Tap on the available on the app store button and that should start downloading CoolPixel onto your device. Like any application that's downloaded from outside of the App Store, it will have a certificate assigned to it. So if you try to launch the application without signing that certificate, you're going to get the usual error. To fix that, you need to go to Settings, General Settings, Profile and Device Management and find the certificate that's attached to the application. Press on the blue trust words and the red trust button. And so as long as the certificate is not revoked, that should get CoolPixel up and running just like this. When you first open up the application, it's going to ask you for permissions. One of those is to access the photos, which you will need to allow in order to save screen recordings to your photo gallery. And it does remind you to always do that as soon as you do recordings, because if you don't and the certificate gets revoked, you're going to lose those screen recordings. Although CoolPixel is free to download, there are some pretty severe recording restrictions on it. If you only use the free version, you can record for just one minute. So you will need to pay a subscription, that's $4 for a year, on three devices if you want to do unlimited recording and exporting to your photo gallery. Those are the facts, I'll give you my opinion later. Now let's look at the settings. If you do decide to pay for CoolPixel, you do need to log in and that's done via Twitter or Facebook. The next three options all revolve around video quality. The first is a resolution, which goes up to 1080p. Video frame rate, very interesting here, goes up to 60 frames a second, but more on that later. And video bit rate, it can go up to 10,000, but you might as well leave it at 5,000, as I've noticed no difference there. And finally, we have a sound option, and audio fans can rejoice because it does include internal audio recording. Now what that means is the same as video, if you do a device recording it will record the sounds internally so you don't pick up any background noise but at the same time when you're playing on the device while recording you won't be able to hear those sounds. Starting a recording is pretty straightforward, tap the start recording button on the main page, you'll get three different orientation options. So what we're going to do right now is a screen recording of Brawl Stars and notice here that it does ask you for access to the microphone when you first start recording, obviously you will need to accept that. Okay, we're all set up. Let's see what CoolPixel has to offer us. Okay, there's plenty of things to talk about in this screen recording, so let's get started. First of all, there is a lot of background noise, and that's because I am in a room with an air conditioning unit on, so there's nothing that can be done there, that's not CoolPixel's fault. Now let's look at the file properties. It's a three minute video and the file size is quite large at 223 meg, although I did set this at 60 frames a second and the highest bit rate possible. Speaking of frames per second, I set this to record at 60 frames a second, but the actual output was 29 frames a second. Bit of an exaggeration on CoolPixel's part there, don't you think? Now 29 frames a second is perfectly acceptable, but have you noticed something else? There is a frame skip every second where it just seems to pause and then jump forward. Quite irritating if you want to do a screen recording, but what's even worse is I think that every time it does this skip, it knocks the audio sync with the video a little bit out to the point where you can't really tell where the audio and the video is synced at this point in the video. Let's crank up the volume again so you can listen to it. So 
So that's a cool pixel recording at maximum video levels on microphone. Let's take a look at another recording, full video settings with internal audio. See if there's any difference. So obviously the one huge difference is the quality of the audio, which is much improved thanks to the internal audio. But just remember, bear in mind that when you do an internal audio recording, you can't hear any of this when you're actually recording on your device. It's all internal. And you may have noticed that the music's not there either. It wasn't there on the microphone audio recording either. And that's prevalent throughout all screen recorders, some sort of weird bug, I guess, in AirPlay. But other than that, everything is disappointingly exactly the same as a microphone recording. We have the same frame rate, which is half of what it's set to, and the skipping of the frames, which is knocking the audio sync out with the video. So yeah, cool pixel still has some work to do despite this latest update. In this final test, I decided not to put as much stress on my iPad Mini 4. Although it is a powerful device, why would it struggle? Therefore, the bitrate was set at 5000 and frames per second at 30. So we save a lot of space on the file size and the audio sync is better. However, actual frame rate is 21, which is poor and there is still an audio video sync lag. Not as much in this one, but it is still there. So personally speaking, I think CoolPixel has two fundamental problems. The first one is that skipping frame. It really is an irritant and quite distracting once you look at your recordings when they're finished. And the audio lag is still there a little bit and a lot more if you push it to extremes by trying to do a recording of 60 frames a second, which it doesn't actually do 60 frames a second, which is really quite irritating as well. I would put at least three screen recorders ahead of CoolPixel. Those being VD, Visorec and Airshow, and at least one of them is completely free. Which brings us back to the subject of CoolPixel charging for their application. They are well within their rights to do so. But if you're going to do that, you have to make sure that you have a bang on screen recorder. And of course, it's not bang on. So where is the added value? I suppose the one thing that you can say is that it does have its own video editor, which actually seems quite accomplished. There's a lot there that you can do with it. And yeah, there are features which you might want to use when creating a new video, but it's not enough to justify a paid application when there are free alternatives. And I know exactly what some of you are gonna say at this point, you can download a free yet fully functioning version of CoolPixel from certain downloading sources, but let me stress, I will never condone downloading paid applications for free. Only the applications that are free anyway. It's just unfortunate that I have to send you to these downloading sites that do have those other applications. Essentially, it's piracy and I will never support that. I'd love to hear your thoughts on CoolPixel itself. Do you have the same experiences as me or do you find it a much better screen recorder? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this latest video on the Video Gadgets Journal. If you want more iOS screen recording content just like this, subscribe to the Video Gadgets Journal. Enjoy the rest of your tech day. Bye for now. I suppose if I was to put the piracy thing another way, it would be like you downloading this video and uploading it to your YouTube channel. I know it's a fine line, it's still effectively piracy of free apps. It is a dilemma, I do admit.